Hi, welcome back to Reach Out. I'm Ron Paolino here with my beautiful and talented co-host, Poppy Champlin. Yeah, she is. <laughs> Hi, Pop. How you doing, Ron? I'm doing pretty well. I can't really say pretty well, Poppy, as we were discussing off oh, camera. We it's were. been a tough last four or five days. It has. I don't know about you, but I picked up this, this stomach thing. I well, don't know what it is, but I got... Uh, I got something going on in there. Me too. I know it's not good conversation, but since we're reaching out, we're trying to help everybody. Right. For those of you who, like me, who suffer from things like diverticulitis, Ooh. IV, IBS, it's been a tough several days. Yeah. And our guest that's coming on in a little while said he had some problems recently. Really? Just, and you're ha you had problems, so Yo, I guess it's something that's happening to I, us. I, because I, I, I didn't know what it was, so I, of course, immediately blame my mother because she <laughs> made me... You mean me the way you brought, brought up, you think <laughs> no, that has something to do? No, no. <laughs> she made me a grilled cheese sandwich with some thick cheese, but oh. when I pulled the cheese out, it had mold all oh. over it. It wasn't Swiss. Like, it wasn't blue cheese. No. I'm oh, like, my God. No, I'm like, Ma, we got to throw this away. She goes, oh, it's good for just you. Scrape you just scrape it. <laughs> just scrape it. <laughs> she scrapes the cheese off it. He cuts the cheese off and then makes the sandwich. Who like, cut the cheese? <laughs> Poppy's mom. <laughs> I don't know. And then I was, I was like, oh, that's fine. You can just cut the mold off of yeah, cheese, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And save it for later, actually. <laughs> She's like, no, you can make penicillin with this. There you I'm go. like, wait a minute. Mom's mainlining cheese now. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> wow. Uh, so I'm was, so sorry. Sorry, Mrs. Chamberlain. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I thought... I couldn't figure it out. And then the next day I ate more cheese and I'm like, I must just have a cheese ball that can't come out. See, there you go. Um, a cheese ball that can't come out. Yeah. Boy, imagine that extraction. We could do that right on the air. That, <laughs> what a show that'd be. What a segment. <laughs> Removing Poppy's cheese ball. That oh. would really be something, wouldn't it? <laughs> Speaking about cheese, although this will air before you've got a show coming up this weekend, yeah, I guess, yeah. which is going to be great. I'm looking forward to it's that. It's going to be great. And then uh, what do we got going on for the beginning of the year? This show will air sometime right after, right after New Year's, I guess. Right after New Year's. Okay, so in January, I have a couple of things going on. Some in the south. I'm going to the south. Where you oh, going? heck yeah. I'm going down south. Ding, 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 ding. Where, where, where but, are you going? <laughs> <laughs> actually, I'm going to Louisville, Nashville, uh, Atlanta, and Birmingham. So what do you want? Be following the car races? Well, what I know it, right? The NASCAR. Yeah. <laughs> no, just doing some comedy clubs down there. Just uh, doing... First so you're, right, you're going to do the circuit. You're right yeah, on the circuit. I'm actually the, going on the Southern the improv, Bell circuit. the Zanies. The punchline and the stardom. So any of our viewers that yeah. are going to be out south, look for Poppy. Down south, look for Poppy at the beginning of the year. If not, though, always watch for her locally because she puts on a great show. Oh, thanks. I guarantee you, you'll be writing into me or calling me, telling me what a great time you had at one of Poppy's shows if you go. Right. Uh, getting well, let me, I, I did have a bad show. And, and people always want to know, do you ever have a bad show? Why do people want to know that? I oh, mean, I don't know. They want to know. But <laughs> <laughs> it was the worst show ever. I when was this? It. it was like two weeks ago. It locally? Was, a local yes, show? it was up in, oh, Manchester, New Hampshire. Oh, the one I didn't go to. So I didn't go to Manchester. Oh, okay. Well, 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 it was well, your fault. But, but see, in, yeah, it was probably me. But in Manchester, what do you expect? I mean, you know, know. they don't read and write in Manchester, they do they? They don't. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, Dodo, we're not in Kansas anymore. People were so drunk and just talking and like being rowdy and then some guy just came up on stage with me just came up on stage i'm like what what are you doing he's like well i just wanted to tell you that i'm leaving and i didn't want you to harass me when i left so i came up on stage to tell you and by the way you're doing a great job <laughs> wow they well just... you know there's a thing called partners for a drug-free america and, and alcohol <laughs> is a drug and those folks that really overindulge in certain things uh, you know, you really need to get yourself taken care of <laughs> yeah. because that's bizarre and unacceptable behavior yeah. right there. Yeah. Oh, I don't know, Poppy. It you know, we've got a great, we got a guest on today that I, I got to tell you, I'm really looking forward to the uh, guest we have today. Me uh, too. He's uh, with the, with a group called PAVE. He's the organizer. He organized a Pave. group called PAVE. P-A-V-E. P-A-V-E. And we'll tell you what that's about in, okay. late, in a while. But, uh, but he, what he has to say, I think you're all going to like. Those of us who have children, have young children, or like myself, grandchildren this is the segment you want to make sure you watch very important. it's very very important let me know as a matter of fact let me let me ask you right now let me know what you think about this segment either send us an email at www.aidfoundation.org or even call us if you will but better that you email because that email will go down that writing is really really important and we know you're out there let me know what you think about this segment. I really am interested. I want your response. Yep. Don't you, Poppy? Yep. It's very important what we're talking about today. So. Yeah, it really is. So I guess we're going to be back in just a minute. We're coming back with our guest. 
after we, these announcements. We've got, some, our, we've got some announcements to be made. Yeah. But right after this announcement, we're going to be back, and I can't wait to introduce our guest to you. So stick around. Right. Take it, Tom. As guardians of freedom, we support the American Legion's efforts to serve the growing number of women veterans. Go to legion.org slash honor veterans to find out how you can help. Welcome back to our show. We're very excited. Uh, Ron and I are very excited. Right, aren't we, Ron? I am very excited We're to have our guest with us today. Very excited to have our next guest with us today. Take it, Ron. Take it, Ron. Huh? <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to introduce and welcome. Hi, John. Hi, this Ron. is This is Lieutenant John Reese, retired from the Providence Police Department, and the gentleman who uh, organized and started PAVE, as I understand it, some time ago. PAVE. John, P-A-V-E. Why don't you tell us what PAVE stands for, John, if you will? Uh, PAVE is Partnership to Address Violence Through Education, and it's a nonprofit organization mm -hmm. to address uh, bullying. Bullying. Address bullying. Yep. That is the huge. That is like one of the largest topics going on across America today. Across the world, and, actually. Yeah, and with we the are internet, so you know, it's, lucky it's, to have you here to tell us because I feel relatively uninformed. Uh, you know, bullying. You think, what is that? That's somebody pushing somebody on a playground. Right. right. How, uh, however, as we discussed earlier, John, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about bullying and how it's changed, what, what bullying meant when we were children or 20, 30 years ago, and what it's grown to be today. Well, I mean, and you know, you, you both mentioned the fact that uh, about the internet and technology, and that's really changed the face of bullying where, you know, when, when we, the three of us were in school, right. bullying was a face-to-face -face issue. Right. You knew who was trying to hurt you. So you could address that. Um, it was it was put out in a relatively small audience. Where now the the speed number one of of the way it can be sent out mm. and to the number of people. You oh. can't even put a number on the number of people because you don't know once you send it. Maybe you send it to twenty people. Yeah. Then they send it to twenty or their yeah. address book. Yeah. So you never know. So that's what we're talking about. Then is the internet bullying that's going on. Where that's it's the big not issue. Cyberbullying. It's not a physical thing anymore. It's a mental thing. It, it's it's much more mental, emotional. I mean, certainly it can get to the point of physical. But the suicides that we're seeing today with yeah. young people. Exactly. And in fact, there was just an article in the Projo um, about the, the Rhode Island being one of the top states, by the way of young people between the ages of 10 and 24 committing well, suicide. John, maybe you don't know this, and, and we talked about this on another show that you weren't privy to, uh, I, unless you watched it, which was uh, Rhode Island happens to be number two. We have the dubious distinction of being number two as far as rate of mental illness in the country. Really? We are I the, did see that. And that, and, and that when you put that together with cyberbullying, with bullying in general, but cyberbullying, you know, people have a tendency, we all do, I guess, to believe the things that we read, the things that we see on TV and or a screen like the Internet. Right. And it mm -hmm. gives it more credibility. When I discount you, when I discredit you, excuse me, or I say terrible things about you on the Internet, especially as a young person who's influenced by these kind of things, the, 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 uh, as you know, the effect is devastating. Yeah, instant credibility. Mm -hmm. and, and you mentioned mental illness. And the two most bullied groups, the number one bullied group in this country, 85% of which these young people are bullied, students are bullied, are those with developmental disabilities, oh, mental, nice. mental, mental illnesses. Um, and also, the second group, those who either have, are of a different sexual orientation, or a perception. Carl Walker Hoover is a young man, 11 years old, in Springfield, uh, Massachusetts, two years ago, um, hung himself. Young African-American boy, God. because he had a soft voice a and soft it was voice. a perception that he was gay so he was constantly called gay and f and, and and on and on and until the point he couldn't stand it and he took his life and wow and that kind at of 11. 11 years old the prejudice and he figured is out terrible. how to hang himself yeah. well yeah. <laughs> you know what again back to the internet ryan halligan vermont Stop. 2003 13 years old he hung himself ryan halligan <laughs> went to a website that not only taught him how to tie the noose, Aww. but also he took a multiple choice questionnaire and it showed him the best way for him to commit suicide. Come which on. Is, I am not lying. Ryan Halligan, yes, absolutely. So there is those There's websites. no boundaries, and that's the problem. That is a problem. There's no boundaries on the internet. Kids can go, as we said, offset. <clears throat> kids can go 
at a very young age when they're still developing cognitively. They're right, still right, because the, the brain still and, develops and till about time, until like 21. They're so impressionable. So impressionable. And they have the ability now, the ability to go anywhere in the universe at any time with anyone. It's a small world anything. after all. Yeah. It makes yeah. it a very, the world in microcosm is right. right there in front of you on a 17, 19 inch monitor. Yeah. And right. you, can, you, can be, uh, you can be as brilliant or as... Or as so when, when you're humiliated, you're not just humiliated in front of a small group of people. Oh. You're humiliated in front of hundreds, thousands, in some cases millions. Tyler Clementi, the 18 year old student from Rutgers University who jumped off the Washington oh, Bridge last yeah. year right. because he was outed on the internet, live, right. Right. With, a, right. with a hidden webcam in his room. Right. I mean, it's just. And whether he's, as you pointed out before we got on the air, whether, whether you're homosexual, heterosexual, or whatever your preference is, Doesn't matter. to be outed is the issue. Right. It isn't your sexual preference. No. It's, 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 it's being caught in the act and embarrassed to the point right. it, that you cannot handle it. It's a violation can. of privacy. It's personal information. I don't care if it's pictures of someone uh, getting beat up, if it's pictures of, of someone that's homeless. If it, it, it's personal information. Exactly. And that's what's happening. So. And true bullies. Yeah. True bullies that are looking to hurt someone really? intentionally. So they're that's like find their job or something yeah. to, to, to go out and bully well, people. Well, they yeah. become motivated. It makes them feel good about yep. themselves to put yep. someone else down. It's the right. old adage, you know, it's like the small man complex. I'm never, I've never been a big guy. I know you thought I was 6'5 before. And yeah, I smoked, yeah, you and seem I, like a big yeah, guy. Yeah, I'm a big guy in a little body. He's got a big mouth. <laughs> big oh, mouth, did that's I say it. That? Oh, out okay. loud. You Sorry. said it out <laughs> loud. <laughs> but that's why we're here, Poppy. That's you know why I love we're here. Yes, yes, and I love you. But that's why we're here. Yeah, uh, that's true. <laughs> because we're both, yeah. Chippy, anyway, chippy, tap, tap. <laughs> anyway, but getting back to the, the, the issue at hand, which, is, which to me is a very serious and important issue. And, and, and children, devastating are the children verbally, physically, um, uh, 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 you know, it's just amazing. And it all comes down to, to, to uh, as you put it, uh, just people taking advantage and taking the, the situation. It's a balance of power, I think, oh, as you put right. it. Yeah, it, it's, an Im, it's an imbalance of power. Imbalance mm -hmm. of power. Uh, and that, that's really what, what it, one of the problems with uh, the, the focus, the media focus on bullying today is now every single conflict, every single incident has become bullying, and it's not all bullying. Exactly. And oh. we have to differentiate. Huh. And the biggest differentiating factor is the imbalance of power. Mm -hmm. That has to be there. And so, there's almost always just one victim. <laughs> if it's group on group, yeah. it's usually normal adolescent conflict, especially with females. Females and males bully very differently. Really? Females bully socially. Exclusion, gossip, rumor, relational oh. aggression. Males bully more physically. Mm -hmm. So, right. so it's a different world. It is a different world. And t what you were saying earlier, too, about how a kid, say, like you, I think you said, an 11-year-old with an Internet device, uh, and if that kid's only 11, you know, and I know when, when you're kids, you are meaner to people. Like, you don't have boundaries yet. You haven't That's learned. That's the boundaries you, you haven't learned. You haven't learned so, so, societal, society's rules of engagement, social, basically. Social acceptance. Social acceptance, yeah. yeah. So, it, so they're not going to know the boundaries, and they're not no. going to be applying them to no. their behavior they're on the Internet. They're socializing at warp speed yeah. with a tremendous amount of people. And they, they don't—they haven't developed true socialization skills. Yet. Right. Well, you know, John, you're a, you're a retired policeman. If you take a, a 45 caliber semi-automatic pistol and put it in the hand of a five-year-old child, oh. that child is extremely deadly that's, dangerous. That's that's really, yeah, that kid's more dangerous, dangerous than I an use, adult. I use that analogy quite often wow. because I'm a retired police officer. And when we give kids yeah. a cell phone with internet access, or or a laptop or an iPad with internet access. That's exactly what we're and handing them. Yeah. We wouldn't hand a forty-five to a right. kid without saying, by right. the way, hey, do this, this, and this. Don't do this and yeah, this. Yeah. We take them. We train them. We don't do that with computers. Right, right. We just hand it to them. Hey, here's your new Mac. Yeah. And you can go anywhere. And you anywhere. can go anywhere. And, and do anything and they find out explore. how to kill yourself. It, it in really two is on the adults. Before you talk well, to your parents it. about, I'm being bullied by this and this and this person. Right. They'll just go and and and, and, and when we were growing up, John, when, when we finally got TV, somebody my age. The, our parents allowed the TV to babysit us somewhat. Well, they went That's while Dad true. worked and That's Mom took true. care of the house. Now you have a, you have a much more lethal weapon. Right. Here's.